Good afternoon, my real news media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for November 28, 2023. And in the news this afternoon, fair at the Spot Valley High after grade 9 girl boxes educator colleagues a car tire slashed. A teacher who said that she was slapped several times in the face by a ninth grade female student whom she had reprimanded is appealing to the education ministry to do more to ensure educators' safety. The attack, which occurred at the Spot Valley High School in St. James, has triggered a fear among staff, as it is also alleged that the car tire of a colleague who had helped transport the teacher to hospital was punctured the day after the incident. A student dripped and boxed me several times because I said stop the fighting in class. The man's a teacher who asked not to be identified by name told the news. She said the matter has since been reported to the police. I'm emotionally scarred, distraught. I don't feel safe attending work, none at all, because you don't know when another student might feel the hype and want to try it again, she added. She has not returned to school since. At least one of her colleagues has indicated an unwillingness to go back into the classroom if the student returns to school after her 10 days of suspension is up. In a voice note, she expressed her dissatisfaction with the punishment meted out to the student. Now the talk of the town is pick the box, miss, and get 10 days. 10 days to box down, teacher? What is 10 days? She raged. She said other educators are reluctant to work at the Spot Valley High, and those who do are now uneasy. Something has to be done about the pitney them, she demanded. The teacher, who was allegedly hit in the face, is pleading with the education ministry to intervene. We need to have that reassurance and support from them so that we know that we are safe, she appealed. She said, coupled with some students' bad behavior, the school also has breaches in its perimeter fencing and the lacks of sufficient security guards. Safety in the parking lot for teachers' property is lacking, as several vehicles in the parking lot have been damaged by students. Tires have been slashed, tires cut by objects to puncture them, she stressed. When the news contacted the Spot Valley High principal, Richard Thompson, he confirmed the teacher's report. Yes, there was an incident on Wednesday last week. So far since the incident, we have collected our reports from all parties, which included the teachers and the students involved and other students who would have been in the classroom at the time, Thompson said. He noted that the student at the center of the brawl has been suspended. There is further investigation going on. The matter has been sent to the personal committee of the board for them to do their continuous investigation and to call that matter as it relates to the student with the parents for further interrogation, he revealed. I can also confirm that on Thursday, the right back tire of a teacher's van was slashed with a sharp object. As it relates to the perimeter fencing, we would have been in dialogue with the Ministry of Education, which so far has done their procurement and have the matter been dealt with as to getting the perimeter fencing up. So yes, we do have a perimeter fence issue, Thompson added. He said he and his staff are scared. On Friday, I would have seen my staff in a mood that we were all in a scared mood. I would tell you myself we were in a mood where we were wondering what is really happening and if this is really happening here at Spot Valley High. So we had a meeting and we would have come up with the things that we could do in the interim until we get certain things in place, he added. He said that the government has provided funding for the school to procure cameras and that the process is near completion. It is just a pity that it happened now. We do have funding for that and we have been speaking with suppliers. That is in place. We would have already paid half the amount of the money to get the fencing. So there is some form of feeling of safety. It is sad that this has to happen, although we have had those in the pipeline coming to be done starting as soon as December, the principal explained. It is sad that there is this attack on my teachers and staff on a whole. I think it is just for us as human beings to understand that our teachers, especially my teachers here, have taken their time to teach. Somehow it is not appreciated. There are some students, I can tell you, who do appreciate my teachers here. We just have things overwhelming here that it is really affecting the learning process, he said. Today's educators, the principal added, have to play multiple roles. We have to be here as not only as teachers, but we are here as security, as mothers, as grandfathers. But we really want to spend more of the time dealing with educating our youth, he said. The students that we're dealing with here, they have a lot of problems. And the minister again has put things in place. But it's for a few. They can only afford some students. So we have case management going on. We tend to put a lot of interventions in place. And we are really hoping for the best, Thompson said. In June last year, following a series of attacks on teachers, then a Jamaica Teachers Association president, 
Winston Smith encouraged the educators to stand up and to fight back. In an interview with the news, he said that teachers should not rule over and play dead and let the students think they are pushovers. It doesn't faze me if people want to castigate me for it. But I do not want my teachers to just sit down and allow themselves to become a victim, a fire Smith declared. So because you're trying to be professional, you end up being professionally dead? Witness says accused the shooting video of Shanika Gray's murder. A witness on Monday told the court that the man accused of murdering young Shanika Gray showed him a video of him committing the act. A saw man stabbing a little girl with a big kitchen knife and blood splashing everywhere. The little girl was groaning and begging for help with her hands in the air. I asked him who was in the video and he said, it's me, you don't see that it's me, and then pulled away the phone from my face. The witness said from the dock in the St. James Circuit Court. He was referencing a conversation that he allegedly had on January 29, 2017 with Gregory Roberts, who is charged with the murder of the 15-year-old girl. The witness said that before Roberts left, he asked him for water to wash his hands, which had blood on them. He further testified that while he was on his way to work the following day, he saw a missing girl photo and recognized it to be the same girl that was in the video. The man said the conversation with Roberts took place at the house of a female friend. He was at her house, he said, when a car drove into the yard and someone called the female. He recognized the voice as that of Roberts, who he had met about two months before. He told the court that the female said she wasn't going outside because she didn't want Roberts to kill her. He stated that Roberts then called him and informed him that he wanted to show him something and he went outside to meet him. He claimed that Roberts, who was dressed in a blood-splattered merino, then showed him the video on his phone. Roberts is being tried for the 2017 murder of the Green Pond High School student, whose body was discovered with stab wounds in bushes in Irwin, St. James, on February 1 that year. On Monday, the second day of trial, the teenager's mother relived the trauma of her child's disappearance and the horror of being told that she was dead. Speaking via the Zoom platform, she said she last saw her daughter on January 29, 2017. She had left her at home as she went to work in the morning, but saw her later that day. I was at the KFC on Howard Cook Boulevard in St. James, and I saw Shanika and her friends at the KFC. I spoke to Shanika and I left and went home, because she was eating and it was 6.30, the mother explained in her evidence in chief. She also told the court that when her daughter did not get home at 7 p.m. as expected, she tried several times without a success to contact her by phone and then spent several hours looking for her in Montego Bay. Her search was futile. As a result, she said she called Shanika's aunt and had a conversation with her, after which she went home. The mother testified that she reported her daughter's disappearance at the Freeport police station on January 30, but did not learn of her whereabouts until two days later. On February 1, 2017, I got a call and I went to Irwin in St. James and spoke to a police officer, and the officer showed me a picture of Shanika in a tiger print dress, the same picture in the missing persons report. I don't know anything after that. I woke up in the hospital, the mother said, wiping her eyes. Roberts, who was dressed in a red shirt and the black pants and the sported plaited hair, occasionally smiled during the testimonies. The trial continues today.